Well, hey there, everyone. This is Dave DeBow with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, my special guest all the way from Ohio via Windsor originally, Augustino Pintus. How are you doing today, Augustino? Man, I'm awesome, man. I'm jazzed up to be here. Jazzed up to be here. I'm glad to have you here as well. And Augustino is a very experienced real estate entrepreneur with over 15 years of experience focusing primarily on multifamily properties. He focuses primarily in the state that he's living in right now, in Ohio. He's done multiple transactions. He's uh, syndicating his deals. He's got all sorts of great stuff going on. So I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing you sharing some of your nuggets of wisdom about investing in multifamily properties over the years. So, Augustino, before we jump into that, why don't you just tell us quickly a little bit about your background and how did a guy from Windsor, Ontario, end up in... Ohio, wherever it is that you are in Ohio. Right, right, right. Well, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio now. I, I live in Akron, but we, we primarily buy in the Cleveland market and, and it's uh, the bigger sub markets. But the thing is, is that I, I used to live in Windsor uh, and uh, I left Canada to, for just more opportunity here in the States. And at the time, I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur my entire life, but ended up doing the whole corporate thing for a long period of time, uh, primarily in technology and IT. And I knew that even when I was in IT, running large enterprise IT, global technology groups, that kind of thing, I still wanted my financial freedom. It doesn't matter if, if you're making Boku bucks, you still want that freedom. And I felt like I didn't have it even mm. at that level. So early on, and we're talking like 15, 16 years ago, I decided to invest in single family and small multifamily. That's what I was doing at the time. I had no idea what syndication was. And... A real estate attorney friend, he like a few years ago told me about syndication and what it meant and how it worked. And I was like, oh man, that's what I need to be doing. That's what I should have been doing all along, you know? And and ever since I discovered that, my whole life has pretty much changed, you know? And now I, I focus on, uh, just as you pointed out, syndicating deals. That's primarily what we do. We do have coaching and other things as well. But I am a, a practitioner where we actually put deals together raise capital and close the deals and we return nice healthy returns to our investors. Yeah, that's basically nice. it. Okay. Well, seeing that most of our audience is Canadian and we've heard about syndication, but it's not as prevalent up here as it is down in the States. Maybe just kind of walk us through your definition of, of what syndication is, why you like to do it, why you might need to do it for the kind of deals that you're doing. Sure. But syndication as a practice exists across a variety of facets of business. Everything from movies to buildings are syndicated. And what that means is, is that the, the ownership of the asset is split up between general partners and limited partners, right? The general partners are the people that operate the, the, whatever the business is or put the deal together. And the limited partners are the ones that contribute the money. They typically get a share of the of the pie of the asset uh, in terms of stock or whatever it might be. And in our case, they get ownership in, in the property. And the, the GP, the general partnership, which would primarily consist of myself and maybe one or two other partners, we're running the asset. We're operating it. We're, we're assuring its performance. And we're getting out there and raising all the capital needed for, for it to perform. So the good thing for the LP is that they get to invest in a deal alongside with us to uh, really help uh, the, the, the performance of the asset in terms of getting the cash in the deal. But yeah. then they also share in the, in the returns, they share in the upside, right? Where what's happening is, is that we are getting a return, they get the, the tax benefits, they get a nice healthy return in terms of a quarterly check in the mail. And um, they also get to secure and protect their money in an actual physical asset that's throwing off cash and it's been there for 50 years because typically you buy B or C class assets. And it's, 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 to me, it's very low risk. You know, you're, we're buying into an asset that's been there forever and collectively as a group and we all get to share in the upside. It's a, it's a win-win if you ask me. So are you primarily looking for properties that you can turn around and increase the value in the cash flow on? So perhaps underperforming assets, that sort of thing that you can jack up the value in the cash flow fairly quickly? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. We're trying to find value add assets. We, we primarily focus on B and C type properties. And, and what that means is properties that may be a little older. Uh, so anywhere between 
uh, 40 to 20 years old, something like that. And I, and I do it in reverse because typically it goes D C B A, right? I guess it depends which way you're looking at the letters, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's the way I look at them anyway, right? We, 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 we've taken down more C's than B's, um, but it's a very, very tight market down here in, in Ohio. And uh, those seem to be readily more available. All right, so let's talk a little bit about syndication and and how you go about finding investment partners because that's kind of kind of my thing that I help mom and pops with is to not per se syndicate but to get the ball rolling when it comes to getting their first investor partners on board and that sort of thing because a lot of people are are petrified at the idea of talking to folks about investing with them. So, how did you first get started with syndication? How did you clue in that you needed to work with other people's money to grow your portfolio? Well, you know, I did it a little differently because what I did was I actually bought my own big multifamily. So when I first committed to, to syndicating a deal, uh, I had a bunch of small multifamily and some single family homes and things like that. I sold everything, hmm. sold it all. I committed to do, to do the syndication thing in multifamily. So the first thing I did was I bought my own multifamily. I bought a small multifamily deal, right? Got a good deal on it and bought into it. From there, I then partnered up with other people, right? So what we were able to do is, is number one, learn from my partners, of course, but also get educated because what you just described a second ago is fear, right? People are afraid. They, they just, the reason why they're, they, they have all this, oh my God, what am I going to do is because they're not educated, right? right? They don't know what to say, how to say it, how to pitch a deal. What's the upside? I mean, because if you think about it, you are not asking for a favor when they're investing with you. Absolutely right. not. You're, you're not doing that. You're 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 giving them a benefit. And for many people, this is where this is where it gets a little shaky here, is because many of these people have never heard of syndication either. Mm -hmm. And it's think of it like this: Imagine if you wanted to invest in a big multifamily deal. You look outside, you see this awesome cash flowing asset, but you have no idea how to do it. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. But we allow them we create a mechanism for them to invest in, into a deal and have a big poor, big alliance share depending on how it's how it's structured mm -hmm. in in the actual in the actual asset itself right if anything they are getting a return they're getting equity in the deal they're protecting their money they get all the tax benefits to me it's a win 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 i mean where you know, we're, 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 we have to change the mindset in that we're not asking for a favor. Please, please, oh, please. That's, that's so huge, isn't it, August? You know, because yeah. I see so many people, they, they come at it from that needy, creepy point of view, right? Oh, I, I really need the cash to do this deal. You've got, perhaps you've got cash. Uh, would you be so kind as to consider letting me use it to buy this deal? No, it's, it's, it's exactly the way you're talking about it. Hey, yeah. I've got an amazing opportunity you don't say it quite this obnoxiously, but you'd be damn lucky to get in on this opportunity. I mean, it's, it's, you bring in the money, we bring, we do all the work and you get a huge chunk of the profit. So, I mean, and, that's. And, and you know what though, and you're right, because there's some people you don't want on your deal. That's a thing. People don't even realize that. It's like, if you're going to have, if you're going to talk to someone and they're going to be uh, bugging you every, every week, they're going to be calling you. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? How's it? It's like, oh man, come on. No. That's like I don't you want got some experience for that. Right. No, no, I don't. I don't. I've been very lucky. I don't, but because I know what I want and I know what I don't want. Right. Uh, we, our team, they perform, they do very, very well. We, we've syndicated uh, many, many deals at this point. Uh, we're upwards of about 700 units now. Nice. And that's over 16 months. So it's not very that long, you know, and in terms of the last 16 months alone, we've, we've done that kind of acquisition. So mm -hmm. we've um, very, very experienced in what we do. And I'm very lucky that so far all of our LP partners, they are, they're great. And, but we also under, we underwrite our deals. We underwrite our partners just the same way, you know? So a question for you, like, you know, especially if somebody's thinking about doing this, whether it's syndicating or, or up here, if they're, you know, just getting together a small group of, of investors to do their first smaller multifamily property. Um, what do you suggest to your students or people that follow you? to raise that first capital, right? Because again, most people aren't set up with a marketing machine for going out there and generating massive leads. Plus you don't want to necessarily, especially up here in Canada, you've got 
got to be concerned with the Securities Commission, as you do in the states and all yeah. that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. where do you where do you suggest people start off? You know, uh, so there's a to, to plug the Bulletproof Cash Flow uh, channel on YouTube. That's a good place to start, right there. I mean, we have all kinds of great material to really learn and, and get educated. Uh, because that's probably the biggest thing, right? If someone's trying to go at this cold mm -hmm. and never done it before, it's there. There's some internal resistance in our minds, right? Mm -hmm. It's and it's fear, right? It's fear, and the reason why we're afraid is because we don't have the data, we don't have the information, we don't know what to say, how to say it. Because here's the thing: for many, many people, are just starting out is to first learn the lingo, learn the language of the business, right? It's first and second is building the team that goes along with it, you know, because you're not going to do all this yourself. You're not managing the property. You're not inspecting the property. You're not your own lender. You're not your own, <laughs> you're not your own inspector, not your own underwriter. Mm -hmm. So building the team also helps uh, make you feel better about what it is that you're doing. Then third, learn how to sell because this is, this is a sales business, you know, yeah, and you have to really get in front of people, tell them about the benefits, tell them what it means to them. Mm -hmm. And and one thing that that I've helped have helped coach students through is that it's not about you. No one cares about your needs. Right. It's yeah. uh, it's about them. How, what? How can you help me? How can you help me? That's what people want to know. How are you going to help me? Right. If you go in saying, "Well, I need this and I need that," it gives you crap. No one cares. Right. No one cares about what you need. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, but you go in and. What do you need? And here's how this fulfills what you need. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the whole and, thing. And you know what, though? And part of it is that many, many wealthy people, that's your target, is going to be people that, that are independently wealthy or maybe they're entrepreneurs, maybe they're doctors or lawyers. They have all this cash and it's going to get taxed to death here in the States or even more so in Canada. Mm -hmm. How do you protect that cash? That's their problem. You have the solution. Your solution is to invest it into a cash flowing asset, real estate, and get all the tax yeah, benefits to go along with it. And without taking away all your, your training and whatnot, and I'm sure there's tons of this on your YouTube channel, but how, this is a question I have from my clients and students sometimes is how do you crack into that uh, you know, accredited investor type person, right? Because they, they're... they're not necessarily few and far between, but there aren't as many of them as there are the great unwashed masses and everybody's taking a run at them, right? And they tend to be quite yeah. busy individuals. So how do you get their attention? How do you get in front of those kind of potential investors? You know, it's, there are many more of those people than you think they are. Mm -hmm. There are, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. It's part of it is, is that it's the mindset that we put ourselves in. It's kind of like this. There's, if there's ever a car that you want, like say, for instance, uh, you know what? I want to get a Volkswagen bug. I want to get a blue Volkswagen bug. Next thing you know, you're driving down the street and you start seeing Volkswagen bugs everywhere. They're everywhere. And why? Blue. Because your subconscious is looking for it now, yeah. right? It's the same sort of thing. The reason why many people are afraid is because they're not seeing those people because they're, they're not activating their system to look for those people, right? But part of it, that's, that's the first thing. But secondarily is getting going to places where they are where they go typically nicer restaurants nicer venues they go to meetups because they're often looking to invest in real estate right it's, it's they, they they know typically they know enough to invest in real estate they know they want to get into the game but they don't know they how to get in the game yeah, yeah they don't know how or they don't have the time to mess with it exactly you yeah. know and, and I, i've met plenty of investors at even the events that we hold here in cleveland that they they want to get in the deal. They want to get into uh, the, the real estate game. They just don't want to mess with it. They're, they're sitting on a half million dollars cash in the bank right now, mm -hmm. and they just don't know what to do with it. They know they want to invest in real estate, which is the perfect person to pitch, right? You don't have to sell them on real estate because that's all, uh, oftentimes that's, that's the big hurdle you have to go overcome is how do you if, if they don't know anything about real estate, how do you, how do you sell them on real estate and putting their money into an actual deal? Which to me, it makes total sense, but I've been doing this for a while. So for someone who's never even considered it, it's a, it's a much tougher sell. And I mean, I have my own rules about, about how, to, how to go after those sorts of people. 
Uh, but uh, really, I'm really targeting people that want to protect their assets. They know something about real estate and the power of real estate and what it can do for you. So that's a good tip. Then going out to meetups and and real estate groups and and whatnot, and finding those people that already have the cash, but they don't necessarily have the time. Plus the opportunity cost, right? They're the the, the doctor, the the dentist, the you know surgeon, what have you. Their time is best spent slicing people up and fixing people up. That's where they really make. Yeah their money and then to put their money to work for them passively with you. And then you do the work to get them the returns. So it just makes but you, And you know what? It's absolutely true. And there is one other thing though, too. And I, I think this is where people fall flat sometimes is that they really need to commit. Right. And that's probably one of the biggest issues, especially if they have a full-time job, because I remember when I had a full-time job and I was, you know, at that time, it's still, as I said, invested in smaller deals, that kind of thing on my own. And when you're, when you're raking in all kinds of money, you kind of get lazy, mm. you know, you kind of like, oh man, you know, there's a deal over here, but you know what though? I got that, I got that, I got that fix coming up, right? I got that next, next week. It's another, I got another paycheck. It's going to, it's going to hold me here, right? Yeah. There's no pain, right? There's no pain. You can either commit to doing this thing and communicating with everybody that you know that you are a real estate person because you've, you've already bought your own real estate deals and, and you're, you're out there syndicating and you, you are speaking to everybody you know about this business. That's, that's the key, right? Whereas if you're secured in your, if you're secured in your job, and I use the air quotes because as long as you have a job, there is no security. You're, you're leaving your, your, the hands of you, your future and the future of your family in someone else's hands. Uh, as long as you're doing that, you're, it's going to be very, very difficult to really commit to spending the nights and weekends and uh, really getting out there and trying to market yourself yeah. to everybody that needs to hear your message. Very, very well said. Agostino, thank you very much, man. I told you time flies when we're having fun. We might have to swing by and, and chat with you again down the, down the road because you got lots of good stuff to share, that's for sure. But if, if people want to find out more about you and, and what you guys are up to, what should they do? They could search for bulletproofcashflow.com and go on YouTube. We have all kinds of free material out there. If you come to the website as well, bulletproofcashflow.com there, you could, we also have our podcast there. We have all kinds of other materials and we're updating it all the time. If you subscribe to the list, we will often share different deals that we're working on as well. So, uh, and of course we have our Facebook page, our Instagram page, all the same bulletproof cash flow. Just do a search and you'll find us. That's a good name. That's a good name. Thanks. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you sharing your, your time and your experience today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody take care and we'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Well, thanks very much for checking out the Property Profits podcast. And if you like what we're doing here, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate us and leave us a review. We very, very much appreciate it. And if you're looking to create a regular flow of inbound investor inquiries about your real estate deals, then I invite you to attend one of my upcoming live online demonstrations. And you can check that out at InvestorAttractionDemo.com. Take care.